Hi, Miss Masson. I actually have met you before many years ago. I don't know if you remember uh, at one of those uh, lawyers conferences. Um, I actually want to congratulate both of you for running this uh, race because you both extremely qualified candidates. And if there are two positions, I think you should both get elected because extraordinary individuals and so many endorsements and votes from very highly qualified judge jurist. So my first question for uh, Ms. Uh, Madsen is what experiences, and I know you have a lot, uh, but as far as trial and uh, judicial experiences, do you feel you have, I mean, Ms. Uh, Robertson have a lot of judicial experience, uh, it seems, and you have a lot of trial experience. Uh, so how do you feel you are prepared for this role uh, to be on the bench of the Superior Court in King County? Yeah, and actually, I'm really excited about the trial experience that I bring to this position because it's oftentimes in our profession, you have an attorney who specializes in one thing and they do that same thing over and over and over again. And the problem is that the King County Superior Court is a court of general jurisdiction. So here's everything from breach of contract to child custody to criminal matters. And so my experience in taking cases to trial in family law, in dependency, in criminal, in civil, and I've represented youth in the juvenile court, I think these are going to be extremely important experiences to bring. And I think it's important for folks to understand because so often when we think about our court, we do think about trials. 97% of the cases in King County get resolved without trial. They get resolved by the parties, they get resolved by decisions that judges are making every day in their courtroom. And so the experience that I bring in working with children and youth, with immigrants, with people who are incarcerated, with people who can't afford to pay for lawyers, is a perspective that we need on our bench. Thank you, Ms. Matson. And is it the same question uh, for Ms. Ro uh, Candidate Robertson or, or is it a different question for her? Well, Ms. Robinson has a, a different set, uh, extremely qualified um, set of experience. You've been uh, through, uh, you've, been, you've been sitting on a lot of cases as a pro tem uh, judge, no? No, I'm what sorry. Is, I, what has your experience been like uh, that prepare you for this role, if I may ask? Absolutely. Um, I think what's evidence of my ability and my preparedness to be ready for this role is seen in the extensive vetting process that the minority bar associations and other organizations have gone through. With all respect to my opponent, she's never tried a jury case herself. She's been an intern. Um, I have tried over 50 jury trials myself as sole counsel. Um, tr trials and jury trials in particular are the bread and butter of what Superior Court judges do. And while it is true that over 90% of cases are resolved without a full trial, there are between 10 and 30 active jury trials going on at any given time in King County Superior Court before the pandemic. There are thousands of jury trials that are backlogged and awaiting trial. There are people in custody right now who have been there for months awaiting their day in court. What our Superior Court needs is a judge who has been in trial in a significant fashion. And that's why all of the minority bar associations who have evaluated me through an extensive vetting process, including background checks, including contacting dozens of references, opposing counsel, have every single one of them in, found that my qualifications and my experience and my capacity for this work exceeds that of my opponents. And that's why my abilities and skills make me well suited for this job. Thank you, Ms. Robertson. And uh, Mr. Damper, your first question will be directed. What have you done, um, or what have you experienced, and or what have you read that made you more empathetic to people of colors like myself, or minority as a woman and a minority like myself, um, the community that we came from? How, how, what have you read? What have you done? Have you been in any committee that, uh, you know, face these kind of issues that prepare you for that um, more level-headed, more level point of view? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
I, I can tell you that not only reading studies and findings like the one I cited a moment ago um, that really resonate with me, I, just as an example, um, the sentencing project found that over the course of the lifetime of a young black man, the chances of him being in prison at some point in his life is one in three. The chances of a young white man ending up in prison at some time in his life is one in 17. So um, these numbers don't come out of nowhere. They come from racism. Uh, and I also don't need to read it to see it myself. When you go to court and you're in court as often as I am almost every day for 22 years, and you see a box full of in custody defendants who are there because they couldn't afford to post bail or they were held on an excessive bail amount, almost invariably the majority of those faces are black and brown faces. So I don't need to read things to see this happening on a daily basis. I open a police report. I see that my client um, is sitting in a car, that there is a white man behind the wheel, that there's an Asian woman sitting next to, to him. And the first question from the police officer is whether or not she is a prostitute and where he found her. Uh, so I see this, I've seen it in uh, the policing, I've seen it in charging decisions, and I've seen it in the court of trial, in uh, plea decisions and sentencing. So I'm very aware of the issues, and I'm going to take all the steps I can to try to eliminate any implied bias within myself, that's extremely important to me, and to call it out when I see it in others. And that's in other attorneys, and as well as in uh, jurors. I'm getting a message that my internet is unstable, so hopefully you guys caught most of that. Uh, I think we got all of it, at least audio-wise we did, and over here we did. Um, yeah, thank we got, you. got it. <clears throat> and uh, candidate Matson, do you need the question repeated? Would you like the question repeated? No, I, I think I understand the question. Two minutes. Um, <laughs> okay, thank you. So in my professional experience as a lawyer, I worked for five years as a civil rights attorney at Columbia Legal Services, where we took on projects specifically related to the targeting of black and brown people in our law. And one of the cases I'm thinking about right now is in the use of solitary confinement against juveniles in the King County courthouses um, and extreme sentencing in partnering with Epic to try to stop the construction of the youth jail and today I continue to represent children and youth in foster care, which is a system where we can continue to see the vestiges of slavery and the massacre of Native Americans and the forced separations of families. Outside of work, I also volunteer with the Children's Alliance where I serve on as a board member. And that's an organization that seeks to infuse race equity conversations into early childhood learning and in public policies impacting children across the state of Washington. And I also volunteer with the Latino Development Project, which is an organization at the Monroe Correctional Center, which is, uh, which is led by men who are incarcerated there who identify as Latinx. And then personally speaking, my family is a Jewish family and we have experienced hate crimes in our own home. And so I have a deep empathy for the experiences of other people in representing clients and volunteering in the community and then in living through things with my own family and my own children. Thank you, Ms. Masson. How do you feel about the position of public defenders and prosecutors balance of power in the courtroom with public defenders being underfunded, understaffed, and so many caseloads um, where do you stand and how do you make yourself more understanding of these imbalances? One minute. Uh, who, are, who are you asking first? Madsen, okay. candidate Madsen. The court that oversees our foster care system. And one of the problems thinking about criminal court is that prosecutors are responsible for the entire flow. Prosecutors make all of the decisions in moving cases forward from charging all the way through plea deals. And one of the things that we have to take into account as judges is are the rules being exercised in a way that's fair to everyone? Judges actually, and our state bar actually, sets the caseload for public defenders. And so there's an opportunity for judges to participate in those systemic inequalities and to advocate for more fairness because ultimately 
overburdened public defenders mean more people will be incarcerated Ten seconds. unnecessarily. And candidate Robertson, do you need the question repeated or would you like the question repeated? No, thank you. Um, it's something I've, I've seen firsthand. Uh, when I was a public defender, we used to have open case reports where we would check where all of our files were in status. And I remember opening open case reports and seeing 200 open cases at a given time. Um, and that's not even a high caseload for some public defenders. It's a huge problem. And I belong to the Washington Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, and we have actively, as a group, fought against uh, these excessive caseloads that have been seen in other jurisdictions. King County has a better system, uh, but it needs improvement. It, it is massive in terms of what the public defenders deal with on a daily basis. And I would agree with my opponent that the prosecutors have a great deal of power in terms of what cases are filed, what cases are resolved, what cases go to trial. These are dynamics that I'm intimately familiar with. I've dealt with them on a daily basis for over 22 years. 10 seconds. And I will keep all of that in mind when being a judge and making decisions to make sure that a fair trial is seen. Um, these are some of the biggest problems that the Innocence Project finds in and false convictions. that's time. <laughs>